Welcome everybody to the Blue Arrow Telematics Virtual Conference. I'm Chuck Caton, along with 20-year National Hockey League veteran and former Carolina Hurricane Captain Justin Williams. Welcome, Justin. It's uh, good to have you with us here at the conference. Hi, Chuck. Pleasure to be aboard today. Well, I know we haven't seen each other for a while, ladies and gentlemen, but this man here had a very illustrious National Hockey League career. It spanned 20 years. He was drafted originally by the Philadelphia Flyers in 2000, and I think he was destined to become a hurricane slash whaler. As some of you may know, uh, the team moved in 1997 from Hartford to Carolina because he played his junior hockey uh, for a team in the Ontario Hockey League called the Plymouth Whalers. I'm sure in those days uh, you uh, had a lot of great experiences of uh, being the young guy in the locker room, just like you were in 2000 with Philadelphia. You've seen leadership. What are the traits that uh, you feel that great leaders have that may have rubbed off on you? Well, I think, I mean, thanks for the introduction, Chuck. Um, but in, in all honesty, you don't just, you know, in my experience anyway, you don't just become a leader just like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes learning. It takes um, a process of seeing what works, what doesn't work. Um, and throughout my NHL career, I've been able to take little bits and pieces of, of, of everyone that I've thought um, had those types of qualities and I try to make it my own, right? Um, you see what works, um, what people will follow, and, and quite honestly, what you believe in. And I think those are obviously important traits that, uh, um, that helped me, um, you know, become you know, eventually a, a captain here of the Carolina Hurricanes and um, really life lessons that'll help you continue them along the way. Yeah, I think that uh, when you look at leadership and you look at uh, people that uh, may have influenced you, uh, who were some of those uh, in early in your career and then midway in your career that uh, uh, you've kind of taken a little bit from? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many to really touch on. It's touched. It's it's be really tough to. Um, you talk about them and you you get off camera and you're like, oh, I should have mentioned that guy. But I mean, when I was my first my first year in Philly, my first few years in Philly, um, to be honest, where um, you know there was a, a captain, it was Eric Desjardins and and, and Mark Recchi was there and and Rick Tockett, um, Keith Primo, um, John Leclaire. Um, I mean, I'm going to be leaving some guys out. Um, you know, Jeremy Roenick eventually got there. So uh, there were there were just a ton of guys that oozed. Um, leadership, um, Luke Richardson, another one. So um, you, you watch what they do, you watch how they conduct themselves, um, you watch how they play on the ice, what they do off the ice. And, and, you know, fortunately for me, you get to ensconce yourself within um, that culture. Um, the people away from the TV, they don't really, they can't really see what goes on. They see the, pro they see the process of, of playing the game, but they don't see what goes into it, right? Um, and a lot though goes into just going out there and it's not just going out there and playing a hockey game you know it's 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 the process before it that lets you execute on the ice and um those those guys really helped me early and then when i moved on to, to carolina guys like ron francis and and you know the now head coach of the hurricanes rod brindamore i mean these guys you just you look at and and you want to learn and um, for me, um, the first few years is just sitting back and watching and, and seeing what it takes. Okay, now when we talk about that leadership quality and you, you saw what it takes and you mm -hmm. seeped in everything from all those great players that you talked about, how did you apply those things uh, to your captaincy and your leadership role uh, as you advanced in your career? Well, at some point you have to be, you have to be comfortable with yourself enough to um, consider yourself a leader. You have to say, all right, I'm one of the older guys. I've been here before. I've seen this. And you have to not be bashful about it and really take on that responsibility if you're willing. Some guys aren't willing, and that's fine. Um, but some guys are a little bit more vocal, and some guys um, you know, have that um, in them to, to be like, let's go. Come on, let's, let's bring everybody together. Um, let's do this as one, because obviously the strength of of, 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 of all is, is better than the strength of some. And um, that's epitomizes what a team is. Now, those uh, who are watching us here are in business and sports and business have a lot of uh, things in common. And one of the things is corporate culture. 
And in sports, we talk about the culture of a team and changing that culture when necessary. I would have to think that having been around the hurricane organization as long as I have, there needed to be a culture change uh, since the 06 Stanley Cup and of course 09 going to the conference final of which you were a part of in Carolina as well. But after that, there seemed to be a need for a change of culture. You were brought in, as you said, your good friend and your coach, Rod Brindamore, part of that culture. But one would ask, the task of changing that culture, A, how difficult is it? And B, how did you do it as captain? Well, I mean, this is, it's obviously a question that, uh, that could take some time to answer, but, um, you know, when, when you talk about um, changing culture and, 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 and obviously the first step is realizing you have potentially have a problem. Um, and then the first step is to find someone right at the top who, 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 who can really lead the way. Cause it doesn't really matter if, if someone believes in something and then the next person in line uh, has a different view and then the next person in line has a couple other different views. So all of, they, all of them need to be aligned and all, everyone needs to be pushing that same way, right? So in the NHL, you need to have an owner, then you need to have a GM, then you need to have a coach, then you need to have a captain. And all these people need to be towing the same rope. They need to be pushing the same direction. They need to be pushing the same message. And, and, and fortunately, um, you know, when I came here to Carolina, um, you know, that was, that was slowly becoming right. And then, um, you know, eventually Rod becoming coach and, 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 you know, myself and Rod have very, very similar, um, very similar attributes, um, very similar stances on things, um, and a very similar way of playing and a way of how you have to play. So, um, at some point the upper management just wants to have that message and know what it is and, let everything else govern itself um, because they know that everybody's doing it the right way. Yeah, the culture thing, it's, it's so much of a, a nebulous, it seems like it's a, a very difficult thing to put your finger on, but you know it when you've changed it. And so the manifestation of it, uh, in your case, how did you come to realize, or when did you realize that, uh, and, and this applies to business people, people out there who are leading uh, their companies and working with Blue Arrow Telematics, uh, because there's some areas there that we'll get into in a minute that uh, could be problematic uh, for a lot of the employees when it comes to the big brother uh, approach of, boy, you know, we've got cameras in our trucks and uh, that type of thing. When did you realize that the culture was changing and that you had an impact on that? Well, I mean, culture changes, they begin and start with expectations. Um, you're not just, you know, you look at the most successful companies, you know, you can look at an Apple, you can look at a Microsoft, you can look at Blue Arrow, you can look at any successful hockey team um, or successful football team. They're not the luckiest teams in the world or the luckiest businesses in the world that things just panned out for them. They have good leadership skills. There's, they have qualities that, that, that make them great. And the expectation to keep raising the bar every year is what, what really drives um, the people at the top and really drives the companies. So, um, I mean, you, 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 you can't really put a finger on it, but as you know, someone in, in a leadership role, you know it when you know it, that, that things are going the right way and, um, and you know it when things are going the wrong way as well. Okay, let's talk about handling things because again, the parallel between hockey, sports in general, and business uh, with respect to, uh, in, in the hockey player's case, a guy that maybe doesn't want to buy in or, or uh, has a little bit of difficulty adjusting to a culture change. Uh, how does a Justin Williams, or uh, parallel yourself with a CEO or a manager of a company, handle that situation with a said employee or player? Well, I mean, First, you give them the opportunity to say, this is the way we're going to do things now. May might be different in the past, but this is the way we're going to start to do things now. And this is the way we're going to do it moving forward. Um, that person either has the ability to say, you know what, I agree. Or, you know what, I still like the way I'm going to do it. And I don't, I'm not really into this. Um, and sometimes that's, that's, that's vocally. And other times it can be just through 
actions. And you can tell as a hockey player if someone is bought in or someone is not bought in. And you slowly root those guys out um, who, who, who don't want to be part of the process and um, bring guys in that, uh, that you feel will. You know, it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic because, uh, again, bringing it uh, to you out there with this young man and, uh, and what he's done in his career, you make it uh, sound so easy, but sometimes there are some difficult conversations you probably have to have with teammates. And in uh, the case of uh, uh, our, our folks out there that are watching us here uh, in the teleconference, uh, for their employees to be able to adjust to uh, the fact that uh, this is the way it's going to be, this is how we are going to be successful. And, uh, you know, that, I think you make a good point about that. That's important in hockey too. Like, if I do this well, if I buy in, then the team's going to do well. Then in turn, I'm going to do well too in my career and my everything that I do moving forward. So, um, I mean, Coach, you know, you, you said Coach Rod Brindamore. I mean, he's been such an instrumental part of 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 how um, you know I've I've turned out and I've taken a lot of things from him and. Um, it appears that a lot of other players have as well because the team's being very successful. Absolutely. Now, what would you say as we uh, close off our conversation here on this uh, web conference, and we're delighted to have Justin Williams, former captain of the Carolina Hurricanes, and still working as an advisor in the organization, and I think that that was a good move as well to, to keep you there as a sounding board. And I, uh, your advice to uh, uh, managers, to employees, to people who have maybe this uh, a little bit of apprehension about uh, being watched or having everything monitored, uh, uh, which uh, is something that uh, people may take negatively and really they shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, at, at, at the same time, you, you understand um, that, you know, maybe you, you are being watched. I mean, everybody's watching you at every given time. Um, <laughs> there's, 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 there's cameras everywhere. There's cameras on the ice. Um, there's guys walking around the dressing room. Um, I, I for one, I'm, I'm always observing and that's how you learn, right? You observe. And, um, you know, if, if, if people are a little apprehensive about, um, about, being watched, um, then they sometimes have something to hide, and um, it's not as though you're you're looking for straight and narrow, and 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 uh, um, you just want the job to be done right. And people have different processes of how they do it, um, but at the end of the day, just do it, do it right, do it um, with your whole um, um, your whole mind, and um, you know the company and, and yourself will be better off. That's Justin Williams, and I think he said it very succinctly, and we thank you for being part of the teleconference here for Blue Arrow Telematics. And uh, this man has the heart of a champion and has always been a winner in every manner of speaking, whether it's sports or in life. And the next time we may get on the golf course, he may give me two strokes a hole because I'll need it. <laughs> Justin, thanks very much oh, for pleasure. being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Justin Williams, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for... Uh, Staying with us uh, here at the video conference for Blue Arrow Telematics, we've got more to come. <music>